is on heart failure. Failure means the actual function of the heart will not perform. And as you all know, the function of heart is to pump the blood. Means it is in pumping machine. So, when heart is unable to pump sufficient amount of the blood to meet the need of the body, it is called heart failure. Why? Heart is unable to pump the blood. There may be some intrinsic injury. Ma'am, your voice is not clear. Okay. Today, our lecture is on heart failure. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you, but the background noise is too loud. My voice clear. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you, but background noise is too loud. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you, but background noise is too loud. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you, but background noise Not clear. When heart is unable to pump sufficient amount of the blood to meet the need of the body, this is called heart failure. Means the basic function of the heart is not performing. It is a syndrome. The causes may be intrinsic, means there is loss of intrinsic factor like failure of the muscles to contract properly. There may be an ability of the myocardium, which is called stiffness and results in inability of the heart to dilate properly. And the, along with this, there may be blood outflow problem or in filling of the heart. Whatever the cause, the heart become insufficient to pump the blood properly to meet the demands of the body tissues. Or there is less amount of the blood to be pumped to the body tissues. Means intrinsic function of the heart is lost. This is called heart failure. It is due to impaired ability of the heart either to fill or to eject the blood. Understand? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Means yes, ma when heart is improperly eject the blood or fill the blood. The inability of the heart to pump the blood to the tissues is called heart failure. Basic problems in the heart failure. 
means what are the basic reason when your heart is not pumping sufficient amount of the blood either there is decrease cardiac output output is not sufficient the fluid is normal but the ability of the heart to contract is compromised either there is decrease cardiac output decrease contractility of the heart results in reduced body organ perfusion means reaching of the blood to the peripheral tissues become compromised these are the events occur in the heart failure pulling of blood in lungs and systemic blood vessels they also becomes compromised when less blood reaches to the lungs there is the less oxygenation when there is less supply to the organs they are the less oxygen supply to the tissues means in both condition either the perfusion is less or either there the systemic circulation is less the result is hypoperfusion hypoxia of the tissues god give us a system which is called homeostasis normally our heart do its best to compensate the cardiac output the contractility of the heart they are called increase in the heart if contractility is less heart try to compensate by the increasing in the heart rate that is called the tachycardia understand hello yes ma'am yes ma'am means yes ma'am first there is the decrease output decrease contractility reduce perfusion and pulling of blood in the lungs or systemic circulation gets reduced the heart try to compensate this system by increasing the heart rate contractility means intrinsic activity is less but rate of heart will, will become increased understand yes sir what can you please explain the hello can you please explain the pooling of the blood in the lungs and the systemic vessels when decrease cardiac output the pooling of the blood in the lungs will also reduce when decrease blood reaches to the lungs tissue there is a decrease perfusion decrease oxygenation results into hypoxia when you goes towards the systemic side decrease contractility decrease output decrease systemic circulation decrease blood flow towards the organ decrease blood flow also result in decrease oxygenation of the peripheral tissues there are four stages of heart failure number 1 patient is normal on ordinary activities means normally he is normal but when he or she goes towards the excessive work there are the symptoms appear stage 2 slight limitation on ordinary activities means in first stage there is no limitation but in second stage there is the slight limitation on ordinary activities as you all knows when we are going to extra work then there is slightly increased heart but in this case 
there is fatigue and as well as palpitation. Palpitation means you have to recognize your heart beat. Normally, we can't recognize that heart is beating. But sometimes there is excessive rate of heart results in palpitation. Class 3. No symptoms at rest. Means in class stage 1, stage 2, we have seen there there is no limitation. But in this case, on ordinary physical activity can result in fatigue. But no symptoms at the rest. Class 4 or stage 4, there are various symptoms means patient can tell you that I am feeling palpitation, I have dyspnea, even at the rest. So these are called the stages or class of the heart failure. Understand? Hello? Yes, ma'am. We understand. You all understand what are the stages of heart failure? Yes, ma'am. We are getting ma it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Then there are the types of heart failure. Types of heart failure. Systolic heart failure means during the contraction of the heart, there is the less amount less amount of the blood is ejected from the left side of the heart. Means this heart failure is the failure of contraction. Diastolic heart failure. You all know that in systole the heart is contracts, but in diastole the heart gets relaxed. So when there is inability to dilate it to receive the blood, diastolic phase failure. This is called diastolic failure or right side of the heart failure. Left side is always considered to pump the blood and right side is received the blood from the venous system. High output failure. This is typical heart failure in which heart is normal but the requirement of the patient but the requirement of the patient is increased. They are called hypermetabolic states. You all know what are the hypermetabolic states. Like hyperthyroidism. When there is excessive breakdown, excessive metabolism, excessive metabolism, excessive anabolism. Very, very anemia and atriovenous shunts. These are the conditions in which heart can't compensate to meet the demands of the patient. This is called high output failure. Understand? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you please repeat the systolic and diastolic heart failure? Yes, yeah, I can. Systolic side is the left side of the heart. Means there is the contraction which causes pumping of the blood outside the heart. And right side of the heart is receiving the blood. So systolic ability means contraction to eject the blood when compromised. We call that systolic failure. But when the inability to take the blood inside the heart means inability to dilate the heart. This is called diastolic failure. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then the, what are the causes of the heart failure? 
when heart become compromised what are the diseases number first and the most important heart disease is the atherosclerosis atherosclerotic heart disease when the patient suffered from hypertensive episodes there are some intrinsic heart diseases that is called the myopathies dilated cardiomyopathies a phase come in the life of the patient of hypertension when the patient's heart pumps against very high pressure okay and in this case when excessive contraction is needed there are the cardiomyopathies develop they are intrinsic disease of the myocardium and they result in the heart failure sometimes fluid retention normally the heart follows the law of all and none law means how much fluid come to the heart it will honestly pumps all the fluid never kept a drop of blood inside it but sometime when there is the cardiomyopathy fluid retain inside the heart then there are myocardial infarctions means there is the damage to the myocardium due to the less blood supply the focal area of the heart gets damaged and when it gets damaged it will lost its function so if 10% of the myocardium infarcted means there is the resultant working capability of the myocardium gets decreased so the heart's normal functioning is affected valvular heart disease means either there is the stenosis of the valve or either there is the incompetence of the valve both results on the overburden when there is a sclerotic heart valve the heart needs more more energy to pump the blood against this valve and when there is the incompetent valve means weak flow of the blood comes to the heart so this is also put a drastic hazards on the heart muscles then there are some congenital heart diseases like shunting of the atriovenous all these leads to the heart failure understand हेलो मैम वल्वुलर हार्ट डिजीज का फिर से बताएं मोस्ट कॉमन कास अमंग ऑल दीज आर द कोरोनरी हार्ट डिजीजेस कोरोनरी आर्टरीज दे आर स्पेसिफिक फॉर द ब्लड सप्लाई टू द माय बॉडी व्हेन दे गेट्स कंप्रोमाइज the heart activity is also compromised there is a circle vicious circle of the heart failure if there is cardiac injury it leads to pump failure when there is the pump failure you are homeostasis works on and there is the increased vasoconstriction in the body body tries to take sodium and water retention means vasoconstriction vasoconstriction increase supply to the blood and also it causes increase burden on the heart because your heart is pumping against a resistant 
vascular system and when human water retention it is also putting burden on the heart then increase volume neuro moral activities they are when there is decreased blood supply renin angiotensin system aldosterone sympathetic nervous system and natriuretic peptides all become activated so there is more injury to the heart understand yes ma'am okay now the session is what are the therapeutic strategies what you understand what we have to do being a doctor to help this patient increase the strength of the cardiac contraction how we have to give raja sir we have raja cha cha so we drug to the patients which is running increase the volume of blood means you decrease the volume and the vasodilators to decrease the vasoconstriction then decrease the afterload how to decrease the afterload you decrease with the diuretics and the vasodilators okay first drug is to increase the strength of cardiac contraction they are called inotropic drugs and second drug is the decrease the preload and third one is the decrease after the drugs with positive inotropic effects they are called cardiac glycosides cardiac glycosides they increase the force of contraction they increase the force of contraction of the myocardium cardiac glycosides comprises digoxin digitoxin and cuban bipyridines 54 phosphodiesterase inhibitors they also increases the force of contraction milirunan and the inamirunan okay beta adrenergic antagonists dopi dovitamine and dopamine you all things we have to improve we have to improve the pumping ability of the heart means increase the contraction of the heart which drugs increase the contraction they are called positive inotropic drugs and in positive inotropic drugs we have taken cardiac glycosides digitoxin digitoxin digoxin and cuban bipyridine phosphodiesterase inhibitors milirunan and inamirunan and beta adrenergic agonist like dopamine and dobutamine okay understand hello yes ma'am okay then we have to reduce the preload or afterload these are the drugs they have negative 
anotropic fit means that does not increase the contraction of the heart but their function is to decrease the afterload or the preload not the intrinsic activity of the myocardium these drugs are diuretics among the diuretics thiazide diuretic furosemide and spironolactone angiotensin antagonist they are keptocrine and low sartan beta blockers visoprolol and metoprolol vasodilators nitrates and hydrolazine they don't have positive anotropic effect but they decrease the preload or the afterload understand yes ma'am okay yes ma now two days focus on the cardiac glycosides today to focus on the cardiac glycosides you should have a grip on the on the digitalis digitalis is the name for the family of the plants that provide most of the medically useful cardiac glycosides that is the digoxin they are called cardiac glycosides its history is is obtained from the fox glove digitalis lanata and digitalis purpurea and other plants means they are plant in origin the joxin is the prototype of drug means all the drugs are compared with this digoxin this have a combined steroid nucleus linked to the clacton ring at 17 position and a series of sugar at carbon 3 of the nucleus means this is the chemistry of the digoxin when you see the molecule of the digoxin you find that there is a lepton ring at the 17 position and series of hello can you bete kya aapko meri awaaz aa rahi hai yes ma'am hello yes ma'am yes ma'am dikh rahi hai you yeah meri awaaz aa rahi hai yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so we have to explaining we have to discussing digitalis digitalis is a cardiac glycoside and it is the prototype of drug it has steroid nucleus linked to the lepton ring at 17 position and series of sugar at carbon 3 so this is the chemistry of the digitalis pharmacokinetic well absorbed on oral administration enteric bacteria inactivated so we have to enteric coated to these digitalis antibiotic can increase in bioavailability and there is the narrow safety margin widely distributed in the tissues including the cns it gets metabolized in the liver and excreted by the gut means metabolism in the liver and route of excretion is the gut this is the cardio selective metabolite which in there's in the increase contractility of the heart digoxin is not exen, extensively metabolized means it can excreted out from your body in unchanged form must be given parenterally and excreted unchanged in the urine this is oven 
this is some compression of digoxin and digitoxin. Why availability? Half life, metabolism, and onset of action. The onset of action of digoxin is rapid, digitoxin is delayed. Metabolism, it gets metabolized in the liver 20%, but digitoxin 90% metabolized. Half life 14 hours is digoxin and digitoxin is 168 hours. Y availability is 75% in digoxin and 90% in digitoxin. So you should take care when giving the drugs. The patient is suffering from the renal disease in case of digoxin and in case of hepatic disease in case of digitoxin. Mode of action of digit digitalis. As these drugs are positive inotropic effect. Positive inotropic means they increase the force of contraction of the heart. How? They competitively inhibit sodium potassium ATPase that result in high intracellular sodium. When increased sodium inside the cell, it will bind the calcium inside the cell. And when there is increased cytosolic calcium, it results in increased actin myosin filament working, which results in the cardiac contraction. So these are drugs which are called positive ionotropic effect. This the number one is the mechanism of action of digoxin. Digitalists also have some negative chronotropic effects. By vagal stimulation, they decrease the heart rate and slowing the rate of impulse firing in SA node and delay the and delay the conduction through the AV pathway. Net result, positive inotrophic effect increase cardiac output, decrease venous pressure, decrease workload on the heart. Decrease the heart rate also have diuretic effect. Means, hello? Yes ma'am. Means, digitalists have three effects mainly. First, increase the force of contraction. Second, decrease the heart rate. Fourth, it also have diuretic effect. Means it causes relieving of the edema. Understand? All these factors, they contribute or improve the contractility of the heart. So the indications are congestive heart failure. Means inability of the heart will be controlled. And as it decreases the heart rate, Ma'am, for again. As this drug increases or improves the contractility of the heart, so this is the drug is used in congestive heart failure. And the second mode of action is to decrease the heart rate. So it can also use an atrial flutter, fibrillation, and proximal supraventricular tachycardia. Understand? Understand? 
Yes, ma'am. Then there are some drug-drug interactions. Means when you are giving the drug with the potassium, they inhibit each other, binding to the sodium potassium ADPase. That is the main function, mechanism of action. So inhibit the action of the glycoside. Normal cardiac automaticity is inhibited by the hyperkalemia. So increase extracellular potassium reduces the effect of digitalis. Calcium ion facilitates yes. the toxic yes. action of yes. glycosides. Yes. Magnesium ion appear to be opposed to the calcium hypomagnesemia is risk factor for the arrhythmias. Understand? Then both speed away. Okay. There are certain minerals which interact with the digitalis. Understand? Yes, ma'am. The minerals, potassium, calcium, and the magnesium. What potassium does? They inhibit each other's binding to the sodium potassium. We have to focus that sodium potassium ATPase is the main site where the digitalis act. But potassium inhibit its binding. So it inhibiting the action of the glycoside. Understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Calcium facilitate means when you are giving the calcium, there is already increased intracellular calcium. So it improves the function of digitalis. Understand? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Magnesium ions appear to be opposed to the calcium. Means hypomagnesemia is risk factor for the arrhythmia. These are some minerals. They cause drug drug interaction with the digitalis. Understand, Vita? So, the precipitating factor for the toxicity of the digitalis is electrolyte dis disturbances like hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, and hypercalcemia. Hypomagnesemia, hyper hypokalemia, but hypercalcemia. Drugs, cunidine, and virapamil. These two drugs increase the toxicity. Other drug factors, hyperthyroidism, hypoxia, renal failure, and myocarditis itself. They can cause the toxicity of the digitalis. Understand? Hello? Yes, ma'am. What are the toxicity clinical features of digitalis toxicity? GIT is the most common site of digitalis toxicity. Means anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. As I have told you, it, they can easily cross the blood brain barrier. So, CNS side effects are also pronounced like headache, fatigue, confusion, blood visions, and the cardiac effect. Proximal atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, premature ventricular contraction, and ventricular fibrillation, and finally, complete heart block. They can be result in the toxicity of digitalis. Digitalis causes chromatopoesia with overdoses, like patient appears yellow. So, congestive heart failure can be treated with stop digitalis, potassium depleting diuretics, lignocaine for ventricular arrhythmias, phenytoin for ventricular and atrial arrhythmias, and atropine to treat the heart. And G. The dioxin specific FAB antibody fragments reverse the manifestation of digitalis toxicity. This is the treatment for the toxicity of the digitalis. Congestive heart failure. What are the contraindications for digitalis? Obstructive pericarditis and idiopathic hypertrophic subacute aortic. 
these two are the contraindication you haven't given digitalis in these two conditions constructive pericarditis and idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis this is all about the digoxin inshallah on tomorrow we will continue same lecture on heart failure and we will finish the chapter inshallah next more thank you okay inshallah allah hafiz ma'am ma'am do share the ppt ji 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 beta साइड शेयर कीजिएगा बहुत आपकी आवाज नहीं क्वेश्चन आप टेक्स्ट कर रहे हैं चैट में क्वेश्चन करें अपना हां चलो ऐसे इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क चैट ओके मैम पीडीएफ शेयर करें ना आप बस ये कह रहे हैं बेटे आपकी आवाज मुझे समझ नहीं आ रही शेयर द स्लाइड शेयर द स्लाइड ओके थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू